Welcome to our Muddy Stilettos and Leighton Park Valentine special. Um, so this is a two course meal with accompaniments um, that you can make for your loved ones, either as a gift for a happy couple or um, for your adoring spouse or partner. Right, so this is our chocolate pudding. This is one of my favorite recipes because it's really versatile. So you can either have it plain, so it's just a plain chocolate, chocolate pudding, or you can add flavors to it. Uh, that'll be a little bit of cinnamon or some ginger or some a peppermint essence. But again, use it sparingly, so it's just a little, little drops of stuff. Now, the recipe is for a plain flavored, you know, chocolate pudding. I'm going to flavour this one with a little bit of orange. I'm taking the zest off this orange. And the idea is not to grate it so you can see lots of white pith because that tastes really bitter. So you're just wanting the outside edge uh, where there's some nice natural oils in it and really flavourful. Now, if you were going to um, add, say, for instance, a little bit of cinnamon or stuff, you add it at the same time as your cocoa. For decoration later, I'm just going to take a little peeling off. So I've got one here that I've just done. If you wanted to use uh, low fat milk with this, if you wanted to use coconut milk or uh, soya or uh, oat milk, you can, replace, you can replace the milk really easily to suit your dietary needs or, or whatever. It should be fine. If you're using um, a skimmed milk, so it's really low fat, I recommend that you do add some flavourings to it to take away from, from the lack of that. So here we are with our cocoa and we're adding that in now. Now this is 25 grams of corn flour, uh, we've got 30 grams of cocoa powder and we're going to be adding in our, let me just check, 100 grams of sugar. Now this recipe is enough for four people. Um, but you can obviously reduce the quantities down for one or two. Um, and I did it for four, uh, so there's leftovers. So the curry's for two, but the pudding's for four. We're gonna add in our um, milk. The reason why we're not adding this all straight away at once is because it won't get rid of the lumps effectively. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit at a time and stirring it. We've not got the heat on, and the reason why we haven't got the heat on is because this is going to cook really quickly. So this is sort of a quality control that we make sure that all the lumps are out before we start cooking, because if we suddenly start cooking, we're, we're sort of backtracking on ourselves. So that's lovely and smooth. We're adding in the milk, um, and I'm going to put in my um, orange zest that I did earlier. Um, but at this point, you could put in your cinnamon um, or any of your essences. We're going to start cooking this. So we're going to put ours, ours onto quite a high heat. So if six is the maximum, I'm going to put this on a five. I'm going to be stirring it constantly. And if it starts looking or feeling like it's going to burn, um, I'm going to take it off the heat immediately, lower it, wait for it to cool itself down and put it back on. Um, the trick with this recipe uh, is it is super quick and easy, but you don't want any lumps in it. So. It's starting to heat up. You can see the steam's coming off. When it does heat up, it's gonna thicken really quickly because the starch molecules are gonna cause gelatinization to occur when it gets to a certain temperature. So we're just waiting for it to get to that temperature. As you can see, this is starting to thicken up beautifully and it's bubbling. Say about 30 seconds of bubbling and then we're gonna take it off switch that off and we'll plate it up and I'll show you what we need to do. So this is what I'm serving this in. It's cute, it's didder. Um, this is a good size. You don't want too much of this. Uh, well, you might do, but you know, this is a good serving and this mixture will make four of these. We're just filling this up to about here. Now, <laughs> I'm going to tell you a cheeky little trick. So when this cools, it will, it will have a skin on top. So I'm gonna show you a little trick where you can stop that from happening. Get a small piece of cling film and just pop it on the top like that. And what that does is that stops the skin from forming 
um, on the top. This is a potato, spinach and chickpea curry. Uh, really, really nice, really straightforward to do. Um, only a few ingredients and very versatile. We're going to be peeling our potatoes. Again, just doing this straight down and round until there's no skin left on the potato. You can use sweet potatoes, you can use red potatoes. You don't have to peel them, you can leave the skin on for a little bit of extra fibre if you like. We're peeling our, um, our garlic and uh, chopping our onion. So we're cutting off the Harry Potter sorting hat. Cutting this in half. A curry is very forgiving. You can cut big chunky vegetables, you can cut thin slices. So it is really down to you. Now, with the onions, this is the root of it, so this is holding all these layers. So if I cut this part off, again, the onion is gonna you know, slide everywhere. So for this recipe, I think I'm gonna do some slices of onion, quite thick. And can you see it's not wobbling everywhere, it's just slicing beautifully. And these are quite thick slices, and you have to imagine that when they're cooked, these will go into sort of strands. And then we've discarded the end part. Just slicing that nicely. And then when we get to the root end, whoo, she says, we're just going to pop that part in the bin. So we're just slicing our garlic. We're creating a bridge between our thumb and our finger and then we're just cutting it so that it's in small pieces. If you've got a garlic crush, you can just use that. We're now gonna move on to cutting our potatoes. And again, it's that bridge that we're creating and we're holding on and slicing our potatoes. And can you see how it's sort of very thick rounds? And now what you can do is just cut them into four like that and that'll give us some nice even sized pieces for our curry. Just like that and then we'll cut our second one take those off the board cut our second one and again this is using the claw grip and where we're letting the potato fall like that and then when you get to the end just using the bridge there so that's two different ways of cutting your potatoes and again again just cutting these into even sized pieces and for this recipe that's pretty much all the work done on the cutting and preparing front right so we switched our hob on five which is quite a high one so not going to maximum of six but somewhere close and what we're going to do is add in our oil so just put some oil in there so we're going to add in our potatoes and our onions And can you hear that lovely sizzling sound? Shows us that it's starting to cook. Right, so it's time to add our garlic. We've got our potatoes, our onion, our garlic in the pan. Now what we need to do is add in our curry paste. I've got two different types of curry paste here. Um, this one says Balti and this one says Tikka Masala. It doesn't matter which one you use. It will affect the flavour slightly, but it's just whatever you've got. Now, there's a difference between a curry paste and a curry sauce. This is really concentrated, and we're gonna put two of these in. Then we're adding in our water. I've boiled the kettle and made this hot, and the reason why is I want it to carry on cooking. Uh, it's already hot in the pan. If I add cold water into it, it's going to take longer to then bring it back up to heat. So we've added in our hot water, we're going to add in our chopped tomatoes and we're going to add in our drained chickpeas. We're going to give it a good stir. We're going to let that come up to heat. We're going to lower the temperature to simmer, move it to the back burner and we're going to get on and make our flatbread. This has cooled down, so now we're going to pop it in the fridge. 
we've got 350 grams of self-raising flour in here. We're going to be putting our baking powder in our flour. It's always best to put the dry ingredients in together and then give them a stir through before you start on adding the wet ingredients. Now, as you can see, my bowl is on the scales and it's zeroed and it's ready so that I can weigh my yogurt straight in to my flour. So we need 350 grams. You can use any yogurt you want. Um, low fat, uh, this is a Greek style yogurt. I've got a knife, it's easier to mix these things and scrape off. So I'm just stirring this yogurt into the flour to make a lovely dough. It doesn't take long to come about. Because this has got baking powder in its self-raising flour um, and it's got yogurt in it, it will basically rise while it's cooking. So we don't need to do that. Yep. You're just combining it all and cleaning the bowl with the dough so that everything's just all mixed in. Now this, the recipe, the quantities that I've given you, makes a lot of flatbreads. Probably more than two people can eat. So what you can do is either half the recipe you see, I think when you're having a curry, having a little bit of leftover flatbread is much better than not having enough, which is why I've given you quite a big recipe. But what you can also do is you can freeze it once you've portioned it. So I'm just portioning it now. The easiest way to, to get these is to cut it like this. I mean, alternatively, you can weigh each bit, but they're roughly, you know, they're roughly the same size. So this makes eight flatbreads. And like I said, you can freeze this. And when you take it out of the freezer, if it's in little lumps, it doesn't take long to defrost until you need it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put our frying pan on to uh, quite a high heat, probably about four. And while this is getting warm, we're going to roll out our flatbreads. Now, you need to put some flour down it's quite sticky, so just make sure that you can move it. Um, we're going to be cooking these in the frying pan, so my plan is to roll them so that we can fit two in at a time. So that's about right, that's the good thickness there. So can you see that? It's probably about the thickness of a pound coin. We'll do the next one. And they don't have to be beautifully shaped, they're supposed to be slightly rustic. So again, now, we're going to fry these in the frying pan, but we're not frying them with any oil. This is dry fry. And in between batches, so we're going to have to do these in batches. So we'll do two, um, four, six, yeah, so it'll be four batches. We're going to put these in our frying pan like this. And we're going to let them cook for about two to three minutes on each side. So that's why I've got the first lot in. Don't get them all, all done out and then start cooking. Start cooking them as you're shaping them it's much better on your timings our curry's cooking and we're just going to do this and roll some more out while they're cooking we've got our flatbreads all rolled out these ones are nearly ready to turn over can you see oh perfect perfect so just turn those over and they'll probably it's two or three minutes each side but we'll just see how we go, but just keep an eye. And you don't want to be poking them about too much because they'll fall apart, but you do want to give them enough time to, to cook through and puff up. So these are ready. I'm going to make some space where I can put these down. I'm going to take them out of the pan. Now this, look how beautiful they are. I don't know if you can see that. They're really nice. This pan, this flour is just going to keep burning. So if we don't clear the pan, clean the pan, all you need to do is just get a tea towel or a dry cloth over the sink or the bin and just give it a scrape out and a clean out. Right, so our flatbreads are all beautifully made. I'm going to pull our curry over here and just finish it off. So I've checked our potatoes. Let's double check it with a knife. Oh, calm down, calm down. Just check it with a knife and see that the knife goes in easily. So this is, yeah, this is cooked. So we're going to put our spinach in and we're going to put a good couple of handfuls. And then we're just going to stir it round. 
You can use frozen spinach, that's absolutely fine. Um, and obviously you would have defrosted it and then put it through. Let's just, this will wilt down in no time at all. Um, and then we'll serve it in our bowl. And this is our curry and our flatbread. Right, so we're going to whip a little bit of cream to go on top of our pudding. Uh, you don't have to do this. You can use squirty cream. Uh, you can leave it so it doesn't have any on at all. I've just put in a tablespoon of icing sugar in there. And I always put a bit of extra sugar in cream um, because it makes it more unhealthy. No, joking. It just, takes the, um, it just takes the edge off it and just kind of lightens the the flavour. While you're whisking you just want to move the bowl around um, so that it, it evenly distributes it. So I've stopped it at this stage just to show you. Now if you over whip cream it actually turns into butter and there's no going back from that. So I think less is sometimes more. So I've stopped it just so I can finish it off. Now for the top of a pudding, you don't want thick, thick cream where it's solid. You want to be able to scoop it so it goes in with your pudding. So I would have said that was about the right consistency. Nice blob of cream, because we're so healthy. Your orange. Now we peeled it, you've got some nice textures with this. So if I use this piece here, thinly slice so you've just got some little strands of oranges couple like that and maybe again with the mint leaf or like I've shown you with a strawberry just something to make it look nice there you go and there's a nice chocolate orange pudding <laughs>